Hello, everybody. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. Our show is brought to you by Hockey Locker. You can call them at 414-800-7585 or visit their website at hockeylockermilwaukee.com. But that's not why we're here. We come with somber hearts. Yeah. Um, this this one's getting a little out of hand. Yeah. Um, we're seeing this more and more um, since probably about the deadline, trade deadline. I've been seeing it more and more. Yeah. Especially with teams going into the playoffs that yep. were playing against each other pretty heavily, like Nashville and Carolina, um, Montreal, Winnipeg, Montreal, T- Toronto. The, the, the hits were getting really heavy. Yeah. yeah. This one, this one hits hard. Yeah, it does. Um, today, uh, Mark Shifley, uh, well, how do I put this? Jack Evans was going behind the net with the puck. Um, and is carrying the puck and had his head down and Shifley left his feet and just drove his body through him. Um, um, and, uh, I, I just don't. I just don't, uh, I don't condone the hit. No, I hit. one of the nastiest oh, hits I've seen in a long time. I think it's the worst hit I've seen since that Paul Correa hit from Scott Stevens. Oh, geez. Oh, I instantly flashed back when you said that. I'm like, I know what you're talking about. All of oh. a just shoots up on the ice. Anyone who saw that game will remember that. But, yes, very, very scary, very sad what happened tonight. Um, today was his 25th birthday as well, Jack Evans. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jake Evans, sorry. I, I apologize. I messed up his name. Jake Evans. Was, it was his 25th birthday today. Um, according to head coach, uh, the head coach, Evans is doing a little better, but is undergoing tests. That is a good thing. Now, what what we're asking here, and hear me when I say this, what we're asking here is for a suspension for Shifley for the yeah. remainder of this series. Because I'm going to tell you, if he steps foot back on that ice with those Edmonton players, or not Edmonton, Montreal players, uh, it's been a long night for us, trust me. Long couple days. We're not sleeping particularly well in our group over here, no. particularly the two of us on camera. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, let's just go off of what Joel Edmondson said in the post-game presser. It was a dirty hit, but the league's going to take care of it because if Shifley gets back on the ice in this series, we're going to make his life miserable. Yeah. yeah. That's just coming from one player. Shea Weber looked like he was ready to kill it. Yeah. Yes, I know. I'm wearing a PK Subban jersey. Please do not make any kind of snide ha ha. But, um, you know, uh, at this point for how this is going, Reeves gets two games per something similar with a goalie and another player. Right. So player safety, if you don't do something here, you give him two games, Montreal won this game. If Montreal don't win the next two games, and Winnipeg squeaks one out, you could guarantee that in that third game, Shifley's leaving on a stretcher. Right. Because every player on Montreal's roster is going to be chomping at the bit to hit him. Yeah. yeah. That includes we understand COVID. COVID. With the COVID era, it's been a different time. We, you've played the same teams over and over. Tensions. But it's still no excuse for 
this and a lot of the other stuff we're seeing go on in the postseason, which is kind of disheartening to us who used to play. This is not how we were raised to play the game. And at least back when in the day when I played, you could leave your feet to hit. It was a very good call that they, you know, made that a suspension. Too many people were getting hurt. I mean, I, I can remember people leaving their feet to hit the goalie. Right. And, and they didn't even protect the goalies back then. Nope. But then again, back then we had, you know, Wah and, and Hextall and Potvine and <laughs> you know, guys you don't, uh, you know, uh, uh, and for uh, Ray Emery and and uh, Mike Vernon and, you know, for a lack of a better term, Dominic Hoshik could get in there and scrap it up with you a bit. Garth Snow. You know, yeah. Um, any goalie from Buffalo in the 90s. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I'm just saying, you know, back then goalies would defend themselves. Right. Nowadays goalies have to play their position or they're going to get torched. Yeah. Kind of glad I don't play anymore because I'd be getting lit up like a Christmas tree. I like. I don't games. play anymore. I'd be in the penalty box half the game. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I got a quick trigger temper, too. I'd be out the game like five minutes in. The minute I see somebody hit my teammate dirty, I'd just be like, done. Right. Bye, coach. <laughs> but, yeah, they, the league needs – lead. I feel they need to make a permanent example in this case. That it, it, it disgusted me. My wife was sitting there crying watch, watching the aftermath. Yeah, I mean, and, 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 and like, like we said earlier in the video, this is his 25th birthday. Not exactly the way you want to be spending your birthday. No. You know, you're, you're playing in a playoff game for a chance to, to raise Lord Stanley. And let me tell you, Montreal is chomping at the bit to be the first Canadian team to win it since 92. When right. the last time they actually won it. You know, it's, it's just to that point where you know, these guys, you know, this could have ended this kid's career. It yes, could've. it could have. And if it doesn't, well, great. I've seen guys like Blake Jeffrey on his career got ended off of a hit like this. Right. And, you know, I don't want to see young guys who have amazing potential get hurt. And I don't want to see grit guys get hurt just because they're trying to play the game. And, yes, he was looking down. He was trying to make sure the puck didn't squeak back around and into his own net. He was making the safe play, but yes, he did make a mistake. You don't do this. You just don't. No matter how, what position you're in, you try not to. But Shifley also knew better. Yeah. Shifley he could have better. stopped long before the hit. He could have went low. He, he could have been around him even. He could have he could uh, he could have stayed level with him and just flattened him. You know, yeah, he would have been into the boards, but at least, you know, at least he'd have had a chance to come back in this series. I doubt that's the case now. Yeah, if at all during the playoffs. Right. We wish him, his family, and the whole Canadians organization well. You know, um, much like I, I wished. Uh, the the kings earlier uh well off of, off of what la's community dealt with yesterday um, right. also our, our thoughts are with the la kings community yes. what happened in that community and as well as uh, the uh, kemloops blazers we'll be talking about that shortly in a video as well um uh there's just so much going on in the league right now and in the in the in the game and right. this game isn't just a game I'm going to tell you this. There's two sports in this world, whether you played or you're a fan. You're part of this big thing called a family. The hockey community is a family. Yes, and it anybody is. Anybody that, that, that would have cheered that is, is not meant to be part of this game. Right. You know, now I did want to give kudos to... Um, uh, Adam Lowry, Adam Lowry, while well, there was a scrum around the net, went and put himself on his knee around Evans. Now, Lowry plays for the Jets. 
and and went and got her on his knee and around uh, around Evans and and kind of shielded him from the scrum. Yeah. Which, uh, to you, because you put yourself at risk there, but you knew it was wrong, and you did the right thing. Yeah. You knew what your teammate did was wrong, and if I was if I was Shifley's teammate. I, or the uh, any teammate, I'm going to the coach's room. If they don't suspend him, bench him. Yeah. Because at this point, Batman's got to do something. Too many players. Hurt. I mean, Sar or, 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 Yossi got hurt from an elbow that nothing came out of. Yeah. You know, um, that you're just seeing so many just little short, a lot of those. It's dirty, dirty play. And right. yeah, I understand the playoffs are a different monster. And they're high stress. But you cannot. Trust me, we know about high stress. <laughs> <laughs> um, You cannot play like that. Right. Just because, you know, you don't know how to deal with the situation you're in doesn't make it available for you to make the mistakes that you're making. Right. You know, um, I take pride in, in knowing that I never injured somebody. I have. I, 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 I've, I, I can say this. I've hurt people, but never injured them to where they missed a game. Yeah, me neither. Never to where they missed a game, but. They come back in the game. Matter of fact, they came back in that game. You know? It, it, you know, I, I just, I take pride in that when I played, you know, um, you know, I think that when, when you're playing a game that's as physical as demanding mentally and physically as this, it's yeah. very difficult and very um, disheartening to just see this kind of play, especially with, you know, you guys just saw Kadri got eight games. Right. And Reeves is getting two. So there's like this. What, are they buying out of their suspension at this point? It's like, come on. It's like, you know. Time if, to put the foot down and make an example. And I mean, if that means firing the head of player safety, so be it. I don't think a goon should be head of player safety anyway. George Peros was a goon. As I wear a Montreal Canadian shirt. <laughs> but we know this. We all know this. Yeah. Putting a him at head of player safety is like making LeBron the head of officiating. <laughs> In the NBA. Or making a quarterback head of officials of, of, of the National Football League. Right, the wide receiver or the quarterback, there's going to be a flag throw. You cannot make the people who are most guilty of doing these crimes the head of them. No. And especially with the fact that, you know, you know he was a former player. you got to get somebody in there that was a coach or a GM yeah. that has, you know, that's retired and has no bias. All right. And, and that's the part. That's the big problem in hockey right now is there is a lot of bias. Just watch NBC. Yeah. You know, you watch any NBC coverage and you're going to see bias. And you watch yeah. any, you know, but then you watch. And, and it's, it's even bad to the point where you see local broadcast markets doing it, too. There are like a handful. I have never seen it with uh, Colorado, Washington. Florida, no, I've seen Florida do it. Uh, Tampa Bay didn't do it. Uh, we all know the Blackhawks are biased. <laughs> Their broadcast is horrible. Um, Coyotes don't do it. Yeah, the Coyotes don't do it and the Preds don't do it. The Preds mm. will talk up the other team if they're right. If they're yeah. Me and John watched them almost the whole season there were moments where i wish chris mason would shut up because he was talking up the other team 
You know, it's oh, Chris. Yeah, Chris Mason's a great guy, and he tells it as it is, much like us. And, like us, yep. <laughs> and and I'd rather have that and have pride in that and pride in this game. But league, if you don't do something, what what does that say to the fan? Right. What does that say to his family? What if he has a wife and kids that tomorrow, you know, say he can't go home and hold his daughter or son? He can't go home and, and be with it, you know, cuddle with his wife because he hurts so much. What if these things happen and it affects his personal life? Right. At the end of the day, these people come out and play this game for us, the fans, for our entertainment. But we also know injuries are a thing. It does hurt. And as much as they're superstars, they're people just like everyone else at the end of the day. I mean, when I walk up to a player, I could walk up to Pecorine tomorrow and be like, hey, man, how's it going? How's the kids? How's the family? And right. he, he would kind of look at you funny, but would be more inclined to talk to you because you're not asking him about the game. Right. I mean, some of these times they are at a restaurant, the last thing they want to talk about while they're eating or they're with their family is the game. They're always more than happy to sign an autograph or take a picture. That's, you know, but a full conversation, you got to actually spark something that sparks their interest. Right. Um, I remember having conversations with um, Anthony Richard about soccer, you know. Right. Just, you know, and Emil Pedersen about soccer. And, you know, I actually – um, told them about the wave and how the wave had get tickets. And then next thing I know, for the last three years, I've been going to games. Every time I go, I see an Admiral player there. Right. You know, and, and it's just... I've talked movies with players and coaches before. I've yeah. ran into Joe Pendenza at a family video before, along with several other Admirals fans who ran into him at a family video before. Like, legit, this man loved family video. He was there every other day or so when they were home. You know, so for him, that you know, just saying, you know, you, you, you kind of have to have that. Right. There's a gray area. But the point of the vet, what we're talking about here is, you know, they have a life outside of the game. Yeah. And we're close to them getting back to that. Right. I mean, once the cup's awarded or you're out, you can go home. I mean, or go on the golf course. Yeah. Hockey players are naturally good golfers. Yeah, I golf. <laughs> I just don't have the wacky pants in a Bruins jersey. No. <laughs> <laughs> Wear blue jeans and a hockey jersey and I'll be all right. <laughs> right. I'll Get one of those golf. happy Gilmore putters. <laughs> but you know what anyways we laugh and we joke and, and but we're we're all serious here yeah none of what happened at even happy gilmore would have been acceptable to us right you know you know it it would have been if we got cut from our team we got cut yeah we took it with, you know we gotta work harder and to even be a reserve because yeah you got cut that doesn't mean they're going to need you later right so you got to work harder just to make sure that if they do need you you could take that spot and and that's just it you know and in sports there's a lot of hard work a lot of sacrifice you make and yeah. you made the sacrifice right now to say he's an american born hockey player his family is stuck here Right. He's up there. They can't even be there to support him right now, unless they're fully vaccinated, which that changes everything. But it, it's just hard, you know. I mean, think of the Preds for this instance. Um, Roman Yossi, everybody had babies this year. Right. You know, and, and, and everybody got And hurt. most of these players are family men, believe it or not. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, I own a Pontus Aberg jersey just for that reason. I have all the respect in the world for him as a dad. Yeah. It has nothing to do with his play. It was all about him as a person. And and some of the times, that's what I like, even with PK. 
I right. like him as a person. Not, I don't particularly care for him as a player, but I, I love PK as a person. He's entertaining. He's energetic, and and he's really good in a community in in his local communities wherever. Yeah. He's I mean, children's hospitals. He loves going there. And, and it's rare to see in sports these days, but it's co- very common in hockey. Yeah. And think about it this way. What if he had a visit with a kid tomorrow at a local hospital? Who knows? Right. You don't know. You know, and that's that's part of it. I mean. All right. I just saw it again. It's terrible. It's very sad. It's very scary. It, it, yeah. The way he landed on his head, could have been, it could have been a lot worse. Yeah. I mean, it's been a long time since somebody died from the game, but it's possible, you know, and, and think about this. And, and I'm just saying this as a person who has had many concussions. <laughs> I, mean, I have to. Um, playing goalie, I got hit in the head with a puck quite a few times. Right. Especially beer league, they aim for the puck in the groin, <laughs> the, the dome in yeah. the groin. They can't hit glove or stick side high or low, but they can hit there. But, you know, with that, um, you know, there are injuries like a concussion that your head, well, yeah, you'll feel fine. Give it a few years, though. Right. Or give it another hit to the head. You know, one more hit to the head, your brain could be mush. Yeah. You know, and that's that's the thing. I, I, it scares me. But, you know, before we get into this, this somber kind of negative attitude thing, you know, I would really like to say I wish him well. Yes. I wish him a speedy recovery. I hope to see him back this season in the playoffs. Because now I want them to move on. Not that it didn't help that the Jets are the Preds' natural rivals. <laughs> mm-hmm. But, um, you know, as, as for us, um, you know, I'm just glad that, you know, you know he, the coach said he was doing well. That's a good sign for us. Yeah, it is. Um, Last we had heard, it wasn't sounding good. Right. Then again, you know how it is. Sometimes the media has to play their uh, their low, hit the lowest and expect the worst and pray for the best. Right. You know, and, and that's what we're kind of doing in this, in this situation is uh, – Expecting the worst, but praying for the best. So yes, we'll be of back course. with an update when we have more yep. on this. Um, much like we did with the Tom Wilson issue, um, we'll be back with this one. Um, right. Also, check out our page for other content. Uh, we just did a draft video. Um, we're going to wrap up the Preds playoffs today as well as uh, media reports and everything. We're done today for Nashville, so we're officially done. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, it, uh, for us, it's, it's more, we don't want to see anybody else get hurt like this. I don't no. want to see a hit like that again, at least not for another 20 years or so. Right. Now, yeah. you know, I mean, I'm all for hitting in hockey. It's part of the game, but you don't jump and throw a guy into a somersault. No. If you know that's going to happen, you grab on. Right. It, it's just a rule of thumb. But like I said, much respect to Adam Lowry. And we will see you guys later. Yep. Peace.